of visibility stuff and how some of us like it, some of us don't. Well, looking uh, through the internet, I could find a lot of articles about the spout, but no actual instructions how to take it apart or to disable it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover that today. It's very simple and will cause no damage to your motor. This, as you can see, is the spout. The water comes out. Sometimes if the waves are the wrong way or the wind, it gets you wet. A lot of times if you're driving with a the group, they don't want the, winter, the uh, visibility spout active because it gets everybody else wet. Or if you're carrying gasoline or some other supplies on your back deck, it will cause you a real problem. If you've already decided that you don't like the visibility spout and you don't want it at all, it's really simple. You just go right underneath here. This is where your visibility spout is on the bottom. Normally this tube is connected. It's got a strap nut to make it tight. All you do is loosen this screw, pull it off, take the strap nut off and just leave it like that. And you're already disconnected. That's all you have to do if you don't like it. Personally, I want to have a choice. So what we're going to talk about today is putting an inline valve so that we can turn the spout on or off to our liking. Once we've taken the spout off, at the back that I just showed you, you've got to get a few supplies. A simple trip to Home Depot will set you up for about $11. You need another strap because we're going to put this T-valve in line. This will turn it on and off. And I chose the Shark Bite ball valve. It's plastic. I think it'll probably give us the best service. You got to remember there's no real pressure on this thing. It just kind of flows. So the spout itself just picks up the water as it's coming out the jet drive through an opening in the jet drive. There's nothing mechanical about it. Okay, once we got the tube off, we're going to put this valve in line. So we're going to have to decide where we want it here and cut the hose. Pretty much once we splice it, we're going to put the connectors on it and put it back into action. I think we're going to go down about two, three inches so that we don't make too sharp of a curve going up to the spout up here and we'll put it into place. Okay, once we uh, got underneath here on this hose, this clamp hose, you know, I got lights, it's a little dark. This has a protective cover on it. So we got to take that protective cover off right there and cut it to the new length we're going to need with our valve. So you just pull it off, measure, cut it, and stick it back on. It's probably not even necessary to have it, but I figured Yamaha put it on there, so I'll put it back on. Once we got the first cut, we're just going to take the valve, stick it into place where it's going to be easy to get to before a ride, and then we're going to put the collar clamp on. Unfortunately, my daughter borrowed my GoPro, so I have to hold this camera. So I have to keep shutting it off and doing it in pieces. So right now we're going to stick this in, put the clamp in, and tighten it up from that okay. side. Okay. Now if you notice, we put the clamp back on here, tighten it up, put our T-valve, our ball valve, into place. And now we've got a decision to make. We've got to decide where to cut this. I've clamped this back up where it was originally. And now we want to do this with as little of a curve as we can. So we're probably going to cut about an inch off of this right in here and then put the sleeve over, put the other clamp on it, and I think we're going to be finished. Okay, we batten it up. Put the clamp in up here, the clamp here, and the new clamp here. So actually when you do this, you need to buy two additional clamps. You use the same hoses that you already have in place because you're going to cut a piece out. And then this serrated protector is already on your clamp. So you're going to take that off and cut it. I decided to add a piece up here too. It kind of gives us the uh, hose a little bit of a, uh, protection. But if you notice, there's no curve. There's nothing that's going to crimp the water. So the water spout should be as, just as powerful as it was before when you're running it in the on position. It's a ball valve. So this is on. And when you go across, now you won't be getting anybody behind you 
wet. So you can choose whether you want to have the visibility spray on or no visibility spray at all. This takes about 10 minutes total in one trip to Home Depot. You need two clamps and the ball valve. Okay, some of the tools you're going to need to get this done is either a screwdriver or a nut driver, a sharp cutter. This is pretty good. It cuts right through the rubber. You don't have to do anything. You just go snap right on it. It's good. A regular screwdriver if you don't have a nut driver. And when you go to Home Depot, it's going to be the half by half. And that's my cat. You don't need a cat to do this. But you do need a helper. And without Angel, we couldn't have got it done.